Welcome back to the playlist on anatomy and physiology and biochemistry. This particular video is also found in the skin physiology and biochemistry playlist. Okay, so for those of you who are in anatomy and physiology, this particular video is beyond the scope of our anatomy and physiology class. So you don't need to know this information in here. This is just for your fun and for your education if you want it. Okay. Now, um, what we've been talking about in the last few videos are um, enzymes that are used to make a molecule referred to as melanin. Okay, so melanin, melanin is an extremely important molecule for protection of DNA. Okay, and in melanin synthesis, which is what we're talking about, we have these two molecules that are called pre-monomers. And the reason they're called pre-monomers is they're not the direct monomers of melanin. They, under, they have to undergo an oxidation reaction with tyrosinase to become the actual active monomers. But these pre-monomers are referred to as dihydroxyindole carboxylic acid, or DHICA. And then we also have dihydroxyindole, or abbreviated DHI. And these right here serve as the two pre-monomers for... The synthesis of their respective quinones which will be polymerized into melanin and just so you know the way that we get these two molecules into their oxidized quinone forms is we use this enzyme right here which is called tyrosinase and in the last video we had looked at the physiology and the mechanism behind tyrosinase okay now what I want to do is show you a small reaction scheme over here Okay, so number one, we start with L-tyrosine. Tyrosine is always our beginning amino acid for the synthesis of melanin monomers. So through the mechanism of tyrosinase, this enzyme that we've been talking about, you get this molecule, this very special branch point molecule called dopachrome. Now, dopachrome can react with an enzyme called dopachrome tautomerase, also called dopachrome isomerase, which will give you dihydroxyindole carboxylic acid. But there's another reaction that can occur, and by the way, this particular reaction is special because it's non-enzymatic. This is a non-enzymatic reaction that occurs. Sometimes they'll show it written as spontaneous. That means basically the same thing in this context. And this non-enzymatic reaction produces dihydroxyindole. Okay, so dopachrome really is a branch point in the synthesis of melanin because you can go either to DHICA or you can go to DHI, both of which will be oxidized by tyrosinase into their respective quinones and then polymerized into melanin. Now, all of these processes that we're talking about, they all occur in a specialized cell in your skin called a melanocyte. So melanocytes are specialized cells that synthesize melanin, thus the melanin in their name. They synthesize melanin. And there's a special organelle inside melanocytes that does this, and it's called a melanosome. And you'll recall from one of the previous lectures that we talked about two main types of melanin, which were pheomelanin and eumelanin. So therefore, there's different types of melanosomes. There's a eumelanosome that synthesizes eumelanin, and there's, there's a pheomelanosome that synthesizes pheomelanin. But in any case, the actual melanin synthesis and melanin monomer synthesis occurs in this region inside here, which is called the melanocyte lumen. Okay, the central empty part of the melanosome. And it's not like it's completely empty because you have enzymes in here. So actually embedded in the membrane of the melanosome is this very special enzyme right here called tyrosinase. And like I mentioned, tyrosinase over here is what originally gave us our dopachrome. And also inside the melanosome, you also have dopachrome tautomerase, although I haven't shown that. And then tyrosinase has other activities, like, for example, as we just mentioned, it performs the oxidation of these two pre-monomers into their respective quinones, which end up getting polymerized into melanin. So actually, the synthesis of dihydroxyindole carboxylic acid and the synthesis of dihydroxyindole, they all occur inside here, inside the lumen of the melanosome. Okay, and in another, in another video, we'll look to see how keratinocytes actually get the melanin, and we'll see the mechanism of how that occurs. But actually, in this video, what I want to talk about is this particular reaction right here, this non-enzymatic 
conversion of dopachrome into dihydroxyindole. And I want to talk a little bit about the organic chemistry of why it happens. Okay, and keep in mind this reaction like dopachrome tautomerase and tyrosinase occurs inside the lumen of the melanosome in here. Okay, so what we're going to do now is we're going to pick up with um, dopachrome. Okay, so this is the generic reaction right here. So I start off with dopachrome in its sort of diquinone form, and I'm essentially going to get a diphenol right here. So this group right here, this functional group right here is called a diphenol because it's a benzene ring with two hydroxyl groups that are ortho to each other. Okay, but overall, if I look at the, the general structure of the ring system, I would see that this is an indole ring. So that's where the name 5,6-dihydroxyindole comes from. It's because what I'm essentially doing is I'm generating two conjugated aromatic rings. So basically you can imagine that from an organic chemistry perspective, I'm going from something that has no aromaticity in both of the rings to something where there is aromaticity in both of the rings. So what I'm doing by doing this non-enzymatic reaction is I'm generating two aromatic rings from one in which there is none. Okay, So that actually represents the driving force for this reaction and why it's allowed to proceed without an enzyme because it's spontaneous. It has a negative delta G that's far less than zero and so it happens automatically in the presence of water which in fact is located inside the melanosome. Okay, so what I want to be clear about is this is a non-enzymatic reaction and inside the melanosome there's water. Okay, Now as far as anybody can tell this particular reaction is non-enzymatic. It occurs spontaneously. There's never been an enzyme isolated that does this. So it's assumed that the base is water. Um, there's always a possibility that it's not, but for all intents and purposes, we're just going to consider it being water. So that's why I put this B for base here as being water. Okay. Now, in the very first step in the mechanism, I'll do the mechanistic steps in green, okay, the base is going to deprotonate this nitrogen right here, and that's going to force a double bond rearrangement like this. The carbonyl electrons are going to break, and they're going to come out here and abstract the protons from effectively a hydronium that's in the melanosome, okay? And that's going to generate our first hydroxyl group as shown right here, okay? The next step of what's going to happen is we're going to generate this benzene ring, as we see right here. Here's the benzene ring that's characteristic of the final product. In this step of the mechanism, we're actually going to get the decarboxylation. So keep in mind that this net reaction is going to 5,6-dihydroxyindole, or DHI. It doesn't have the carboxylic acid on it. Okay, so in this step of the mechanism, I'm going to get formation of carbon dioxide. So in this step, what you'll see is CO2 coming off. And that's going to force these electrons in right here, and you'll get another double bond rearrangement. But this time, I'm going to form the hydroxyl group on the other carbonyl. So the carbonyl electrons right here break and abstract the protons from an effective hydronium. Okay, so now I have the diphenol here. And in the very last step of the mechanism, I'm going to do a tautomerization. Okay, now I want to think about this for just a second right now. Okay, so if you notice here, let me do these in yellow so you can see them. Um, I have a double bond right here. I have a double bond right here. I have one right here. And then there's another one right here that effectively forms the shift base here on what will become the indole. And I want to ask you a question. And the question is, what would be the driving force for the following proton transfer? Let me do this in a bold color like red. So what's going to happen is this base is going to this water is going to deprotonate right here. That's going to force these electrons in right here. And then the pi electrons right here will break and abstract the proton from a hydronium that's in the active or in the in the melanosome. There's no active site. Almost slipped up there. And then you get 5,6-dihydroxyindole or DHI. Now the question is, why does this reaction occur non-enzymatically? What would be the driving force for, for this from an organic chemistry perspective? Well, if you look at the difference between these two products, yes, they're tautomers of each other, right? But notice, let me do this in, in I'll do this in, in, let's do it in gray, okay? Notice that right here, if I, I'm going to, I'm trying to highlight this very boldly, there's a discontinuity in the pi electron system, okay? So it means that at this point, particularly between these two points right here, so between this point right there and this point right here, 
there's a discontinuity in the pi electron system. There's no conjugation across this particular carbon with this proton on it. So by doing this tautomerization, you effectively generate aromaticity because notice if I if I put this lone pair right here, which is part of the aromatic ring, okay, you end up with a, a, a fully aromatic ring in both cases. Okay, so both of these rings are aromatic versus only one of them are here. So this particular reaction especially has a delta G that is less than zero because what I'm doing is I'm tautomerizing into something that is aromatic and recall that aromatic rings are very stable. Okay, it's much more favorable thermodynamically to go to something that's more stable. Okay, so hopefully that gives you a little bit of intuition on this non enzymatic reaction of going from dopachrome into 5,6 dihydroxyindole. Okay, so that's that reaction, and basically we, that's one reaction in which we go from dopachrome to one of our pre monomers, dihydroxyindole. But we have another reaction that can occur catalyzed by this enzyme which is called dopachrome isomerase or dopachrome tautomerase in which we go to the other product which is dihydroxyl carboxylic acid. The synthesis of this particular molecule and the mechanism of dop dopachrome tautomerase will be the subject of the very next video. Okay, So all of these reactions are actually occurring inside the melanosome okay, of the melanocyte. And in another video, we'll look to see how the keratinocyte actually gets the melanin. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of intuition on the synthesis of dihydroxyindole from L-dopachrome. And just keep in mind, this reaction is non-enzymatic, and it's also classified as a spontaneous reaction. See you in the next video.